Fund Accountant Interview Questions 1. Can you walk us through your experience in maintaining books and records and calculating fund net asset values? 2. How do you ensure accuracy and completeness in reviewing and or preparing financial statements and associated reports? 3. How familiar are you with calculating carried interest, performance, incentive fees, and can you give an example of how you have done so in the past? 4. How do you approach reviewing and or preparing calculations and investor allocations for capital calls, distributions, and equalizations? 5. What is your experience with coordinating and or processing payments and other transactions, and how do you ensure accuracy and timeliness? 6. How do you manage relationships with clients and other fund participants, and can you give an example of a difficult situation you successfully navigated? 7. How do you work with the investor relations team to respond to investor queries and disseminate capital activity and other investor notices? 8. How do you prioritize and manage competing client deliverables, and can you provide an example of how you have done so in the past? 9. Can you give an example of a project you participated in that contributed to the expansion or evolution of the business? 10. How do you identify and escalate material issues affecting service delivery to the assistant vice president? 11. Can you describe a time when you had to handle a challenging task or situation that was not specifically outlined in your job description? How did you handle it? Few answer which you can use for mentioned questions. Can you walk us through your experience in maintaining books and records and calculating fund net asset values? Answer. In my previous role, I was responsible for maintaining accurate and up-to-date books and records for various investment funds. This included daily updating of transactions and positions, reconciling bank and custody accounts, and ensuring that all data was properly recorded and classified. I also performed daily and monthly valuations of the funds to calculate their net asset values NAV, using various accounting software tools and spreadsheet models. I regularly reviewed and validated the accuracy of the data and made adjustments as necessary to ensure that the NAV was properly reflected in the financial statements. How familiar are you with calculating carried interest, performance, incentive fees, and can you give an example of how you have done so in the past? Answer. I am very familiar with calculating carried interest, performance, incentive fees, as it is a core component of fund accounting. I have calculated these fees using various methodologies, including hurdle rates, high watermarks, and catch-up provisions. In my previous role, I calculated carried interest and incentive fees for a large private equity fund, using complex fee structures and performance metrics. I worked closely with investment professionals to understand their strategies and objectives, and customized fee calculations to ensure alignment with their goals. How do you approach reviewing and or preparing calculations and investor allocations for capital calls, distributions, and equalizations? Answer. I approach reviewing and or preparing calculations and investor allocations for capital calls, distributions, and equalizations by first understanding the fund's governing documents and investor agreements. I then collaborate with the investor relations team to understand the specifics of each investor's capital commitments and distributions. I use spreadsheet models to perform complex calculations and review the results with the team to ensure accuracy and completeness. 
I also take steps to ensure that all investor allocations are properly documented and reconciled to avoid any discrepancies. What is your experience with coordinating and or processing payments and other transactions, and how do you ensure accuracy and timeliness? Answer. In my previous role, I had extensive experience in coordinating and or processing payments and other transactions, including capital calls, distributions, and management fees. I ensured accuracy and timeliness by collaborating closely with the operations team and fund administrators to ensure that all transactions were processed correctly and on time. I also reconciled all payment transactions to ensure that all cash movements were properly accounted for and documented. What is the difference between hurdle rate and high watermark? Answer. Hurdle rate and high watermark are both methods used in performance fee calculations in the investment management industry, but they differ in how they are applied. Hurdle rate is a minimum rate of return that a fund must achieve before the investment manager is entitled to a performance fee. High watermark, on the other hand, is a method of ensuring that the manager is not paid for the same performance twice. The high watermark represents the highest value that a fund has achieved in the past. In summary, while the hurdle rate is a minimum threshold that must be exceeded for the manager to earn a performance fee, the high watermark ensures that the manager is only rewarded for generating new gains above previous high points. What is different between GAV and NAV? Answer. GAV, gross asset value, and NAV, net asset value are two important financial terms that are commonly used in the investment management industry, especially in the context of funds. GAV represents the total value of a fund's assets before deducting any liabilities, such as fees, expenses, and taxes. GAV is a measure of the fund's total asset value, and is often used to calculate the fund's management fees and other expenses. On the other hand, NAV is the value of a fund's assets after deducting any liabilities, such as fees, expenses, and taxes. It is calculated by subtracting the fund's liabilities from its assets, and dividing the result by the number of shares outstanding. NAV represents the per share value of the fund, and is the price at which investors can buy or sell shares in the fund. Let's say a fund has $100 million in assets, including investments in stocks, bonds, and other securities, as well as $10 million in cash. The fund also has $5 million in liabilities, including management fees, taxes, and other expenses. The GAV of the fund would be $110 million, $100 million in assets plus $10 million in cash, while the NAV would be $105 million, $100 million in assets plus $10 million in cash $5 million in liabilities. This means that the per share value of the fund would be $10.50, based on the NAV calculation. In summary, while GAV and NAV are both used to measure the value of a fund's assets, they are calculated differently and serve different purposes. GAV represents the total value of the fund's assets before deducting any liabilities, while NAV represents the value of the fund's assets after deducting all of the liabilities. Therefore, NAV is a more accurate reflection of the value of the fund that is available to investors, and is used to calculate the per share value of the fund.